Welcome to my YouTube channel which is titled Research Methods Class with Dr. Lydia Wabugo. In Research Methods, we have a book titled Research Methods, Theory and Practice. This book is accessible through the website where you can access the hard copy of the book or a downloadable PDF format of the book. In the same website, you are able to access all the courses, which includes the free research methods course, IBM SPSS statistics course, M&E consultancy course, which are available at a fee. Please find the links in the description. Welcome. Welcome to this lesson where we are going to discuss chapter 5 of the research project thesis or dissertation. In many institutions, chapter 5 is titled Summary of Findings, Conclusions and Recommendations. We have said in our previous lesson that there are some institutions who bring the discussion in chapter 5. So it just depends on your institution and you need to follow how your institution requires you to title all your chapters. So for our case, we are going to discuss chapter 5, a summary of findings, conclusions and recommendations. So our just added lesson has discussed the components of chapter 4. And we have said what is expected of the researcher when they are analyzing data, when they are presenting data, interpreting and discussing the findings. So now we will look at what is expected of the researcher when they are writing chapter 5. So that is why the outcome for our lesson is to discuss the structure of chapter 5, which we have said is the summary of findings, conclusions and recommendations. So chapter 5 is normally the last chapter in your thesis or in your dissertation or project and it is where the researcher summarizes the findings in chapter 4. They also make conclusions, they make recommendations and beyond that they also suggest areas of further research to the reader. So what is expected of these three sections? Note that some institutions will not require you to have introduction in chapter 5. So that is why this lesson uh, numbers uh, 5.1 are summary of findings. However, follow the structure of your institution. If you need to have an introduction, then 5.1 will be an introduction. And like we have said, introduction is always introducing the reader to the chapter. So you are telling the reader what they will be expecting to find as they explore the chapter. So for us, we are going to look at this chapter without the introduction. So our 5.1 is summary of findings. In addition, there are some institutions and disciplines that you tie to this section as summary of the study. What is the difference between the two? If your institution requires you to summarize your study, then it means you will highlight in brief the background information, theoretical, conceptual, methodology, and then you bring in the findings. If it is titled a summary of findings then go direct to the findings and present an abridged form of the overall findings that are drawn from results in chapter 4. The findings presented in this section as a summary are organized as per the variables of the study as per the variables of the study. For instance Many institutions will require this section to be presented in a tabular manner. Others will require it to be presented in a continuous prose. Others will require the students to present it in, I mean, numbered, you know, where you number all the summary of findings. But for our case, allow us to show it presented in a tabular format. So again, you can see we have two variables. One is to 
uh, differentiate the mean score performance of three science subjects between the distance and the on-campus learners and the other one is to differentiate the mean score performance in teaching practice between the B.Ed students in the two modes of learning. So when you are presenting, when you are summarizing the findings, then you summarize as per the variable. So the summary of findings will first show the mean score performance in chemistry, physics, and biology, and then the next one will be showing the TP performance as it is shown. And you can see you are showing both descriptive and inferential statistics if all that is what you did for that particular variable. So what you need to do is to follow your institution. If it is presented in continuous prose, then it is to show the variable and then show the finding. And it should be an abridged form. Do not carry all that you wrote in chapter 4 to chapter 5. 5.2 Conclusions of the study. These are based on the findings for each of the variable. That means each finding should have a conclusion. Remember, you had a finding for every variable, and therefore there should be a conclusion for every finding. And each conclusion needs to be explained based on the interpretation that you made in chapter 4. So you can see the coherence of all these chapters. For instance, based on the findings that we had uh, uh, in this uh, in this lesson, then the researcher is concluding that the on-campus students performed significantly better than the ODE students and they explain based on how they interpreted the data in chapter 4. Number 2, the on-campus students performed significantly better in teaching practice again based on the interpretation that they did in chapter uh, 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 data interpretation. So each finding should have a conclusion. Then we have recommendations of the study. Recommendations are based on the conclusions you have made. But what you need to note is that recommendations do not have to be equivalent to the number of conclusions or the number of variables. And this does not mean that there are variables that will be left out in the recommendations. It only means that there are some findings that may share a recommendation and others may have more than one recommendation. So we have said for every finding there is a conclusion. But for, that does not mean that for every conclusion there is a recommendation because there are findings that may share one recommendation and there are even some findings that may have more than one recommendation. For instance, this recommendation summarizes or recommends for the three observations or the three findings that we had that Probably the reason why the OD students are not performing significantly better than the on campus is because of lack of uh, interactivity. So all that captures the three findings and that is one recommendation. Then finally, you have suggestions for further research. These suggestions are not hypothetical. They are based on the findings and conclusions generated from the study. Remember, when you are making these suggestions for further study, you are trying to grow uh, the body of knowledge in your area. You are trying to come up with areas that may improve and grow your area. So they should be taken very seriously and they should relate to the justification of the current study. They should also be related to the problem of the study. For instance, based on all the findings and conclusions, the researcher feels that the next person who may be interested in such an area can look at the perceptions of the society towards OD and on-campus graduates and also evaluate the determinants of academic performance in physics in both OD and on-campus. These uh, two areas for further research have been thought through based on the findings of the study. As you write your chapter 5, which is the last chapter, always ask you this question. What is the thesis 
of my thesis. So an E on my I. In other words, what is so unique that my study has brought out, has brought forward. You did not do research for the sake of doing it. You did it because there is a problem that you wanted to solve. And therefore, what is so unique? Is it in terms of the theories you have come up with, a theory or theories, the recommendations that you have come up with? So what is the basis of your thesis? And that brings us to the end of our lesson. And this lesson concludes now the chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Chapter 1 to 3 of the proposal and chapter 4 and 5 of the project thesis or dissertation. Our next lessons will focus on APA style of referencing. Thank you for being part of our class. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Like and share this lesson with your friends. Feel free to ask any question on the comment section.